promised that I would film this Ramyun and Chill reaction for the first episode. I've been really curious about this show since I saw clips of it on TikTok and I was like, hmm, isn't that distasteful? We already know the whole context behind the ramen and hookups. Just to have a show where it's non-Korean people and the title of it is Ramyun and Chill, I was a little weirded out by it. But after watching the first episode, I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm curious. I want to watch it. I'm gonna wait till the hype is a little bit over and then I'm gonna watch it. So I've been ignoring everything, scrolling through TikTok, passing all the spoilers in order to make a kind of organic reaction. I was only able to make some initial impressions about certain characters. Characters. <laughs> Oh my god! I've been watching nothing but anime y'all, I'm sorry. Contestants? Let's say contestants. My uh, review is not going to be super like lengthy compared to maybe some other parts when I watch episode 2, 3, 4, and 5. Here are my thoughts on episode 1. First, I'm gonna start off with my impressions of the girls. I didn't really see enough of Erica's personality to get a good grasp of what kind of person she was yet. So I have nothing to say about Erica when it comes to the first episode. Tiffany was very interesting. She kind of seemed like the type of person who had no real genuine interest in any of the men there, but was willing to pick whoever was the best there. <laughs> I could see definitely her being somebody who is dislikable but to me she kind of just seems like she knows what she wants and I don't like or dislike her. And of course when I say dislike I mean in the context of the show obviously you don't know any of these people personally. Bella who is gorgeous I need more information in order to form an opinion on Bella too but one thing I noticed off the bat though is she has a lot of social intelligence. I feel like that was something that was very easy to spot early on. Even Tiffany said something about it when they all went on their collective date about how she was a little bit worried because Bella does talk how she talks and she's not just a talker she's also a listener. I don't really have anything else to say about Bella except that I think she is extremely socially intelligent. Now let's talk about Sonia. When she first appeared I definitely saw her kind of being the odd one out and when she was explaining how Korean guys don't typically go for girls that are the odd one out I completely completely understood what she was talking about. Even when I visit South Korea, certain things that I like to do fashion wise are received differently in South Korea than when I'm here. I usually like to dress in an alternative aesthetic. So when it comes to the interaction with men, it's usually not as strong when I'm dressing in my preferred aesthetic and when I'm behaving in a certain way, which is fine because you actually end up finding the odd ones out in South Korean society. <laughs> so when it came to Sonia talking about about how you know usually there's a specific type of person that Korean guys go for and she doesn't usually fall into that category. I completely understood where she was coming from and I was like oh I like her she's a bit eccentric. That was really cool that they added somebody that was more on the quirkier side but during dinner <laughs> During dinner, I was a little bit worried about her ability to read the room because when they were talking about blood types, she started talking about sub or dom. They were talking about the Myers-Briggs and blood tests and she was just like, well, usually, you know, when I meet people, we talk about whether you're a sub or a dom. When she said that, I was like, Sonia, no. I'm still feeling out Sonia, but I do know that she surprised me during the talent show. I think it definitely gave her a more alluring feminine, I guess you could say, air to her. It definitely showed that there was more to her than meets the eye. I know the guys were just like, whoa, because I was like, whoa. I was like, Sonia? <laughs> Is that you, girl? That's a beautiful, I don't know if it's a hobby, it's a beautiful hobby to have. Now let's talk about Sabrina. Okay, so Sabrina is immediately likable. She has a great sense of humor. She just seems like she doesn't take things way too seriously. That's at least the impression I get from the first episode. I don't have a lot to say about her because I really feel like I want to see more, but based on what I've seen in the first episode, I liked her a lot. She seemed very funny and very easygoing. I would say when it came 
came to the girls, my best impressions probably came from Sabrina and Bella. Moving on to the men, uh, I have so much to say about Kyojun. Although Kyojun is the type of person that I definitely would not vibe with, he comes off as a very self-aware person and I tend to have a lot of respect for people who know their likes and their dislikes, know what they're good at, what they're not good at. There was one instance in the first episode that was really striking to me. It was when he was preparing the noodles for all the people at the table. They were like, oh, look at Kyojun. He's helping everybody out. And then it switched to him saying, yeah, of course this looks good, but I was doing all of these things mostly because it helped ease some of the anxiety and awkwardness when it comes to interacting with new people for the first time. It takes a tremendous amount of self-awareness to realize that about yourself. That's something I do as well. When I am feeling very awkward in a social situation, I start to make myself busy because it does ease some of the anxiety. Yes, I love helping people, but it also eases some anxiety. So it was interesting him expressing the fact that, hey, I did not do this to look good. I did this to kind of ease some of the awkwardness. And I think it was also killed who was talking about how he was annoyed at the idea of having a girlfriend who constantly texts him throughout the date. As someone who cannot stand texting constantly, thinking about somebody texting me constantly in the middle of me trying to work or in the middle of me being busy, I would be so upset. <laughs> a lot of the people that I'm really close friends with, they'll text me and I'll text them like five days later. I could not have a partner that texts me all the time throughout the entire day and gets upset when I miss a text. So when all the guys were in the room saying anything necessary to make the girl happy, I completely understood what they were saying, but it couldn't be me. I'm trying to work and you're texting me throughout the day. No, leave me alone. <laughs> I think the person who had the best initial impression for me when it came to the guys is definitely Mean Jay. He was exuding lots of positive energy and I like the way that he dressed. He just seemed like a really cool guy despite him not being able to talk as much for the first episode. I definitely got the best initial first impression from him. Dan was a really cool dude, definitely gave off the vibe of California. I expected Dan to be way more popular than what he was in the first episode. I don't know the direction that the show's gonna go into, but I was surprised. I would have loved to see him and Sabrina interact more. Him and Sabrina seem like they have similar personalities or personalities that match. I was so, so disappointed when she wanted to pick Dan during the lunch, but she thought that other people would pick Dan, so she ended up going with Kyojun. I was like, girl, no! <laughs> I wanted to see that. I can't wait to see them interact in future episodes. I hope everything goes well. Like I said, I have not seen any spoilers for anything just yet. I can't watch episode two until I'm done filming this. I do think it says something about Sabrina's confidence, the fact that she didn't try to go and pick Dan anyways. I'm not saying that in a negative context because of course, you know, you can be insecure about certain things. There are other girls there and to be honest, all the girls are gorgeous. There's competition. It makes sense that she would be a little nervous, but I was like, girl, why didn't you pick Dan? And if the fear was her going on a date with like four other girls, which I guess they didn't really know those details until after they chose their person, she had to end up doing that anyways. <laughs> she had to go with Bella and the other girl's name who I forgot. a word? I'm gonna say it anyways, commentator. Some extra details I would like to add about episode one is the commentators pose the question, do you think long distance relationships work? My answer is I don't think long distance relationships work in most cases. Ultimately, it depends on the length of time apart and the love language of the people involved. If you have one person whose love language is quality time spent and you have another person whose love language is nothing near that, that person is probably going to emotionally latch on to somebody else. I think there's a very small percentage of people who can be away from each other for a long amount of time and not physically or emotionally, because emotionally is important, cheat 
whatever that means in your relationship because I know emotional cheating can mean one thing to one person and one thing to another person. For me, certain types of flirting, I don't consider emotional cheating. <laughs> That's just me, but that may vary to other people. Now let's talk about the commentary and commentators. I originally thought having commentary throughout seeing all of the contestants talk to each other and interact with each other, I thought it was gonna be annoying. I was like, I don't wanna see no commentary. I am the commentator. I don't wanna see nobody talking about what's happening, but the commentary turned out to be some of the best parts <laughs> of the first episode and I'm actually super happy that they went with that format. Otherwise the first, I mean the first episode they were all meeting each other and that definitely would have been very awkward. 17 minutes I think? I don't even know if it's 17 minutes. Just watching 17 minutes of people awkwardly interact with like no buffers. <laughs> I was pleased with the commentary. I'm also familiar with Megan from watching her old YouTube videos a very, very long time ago. I was very happy that they brought her onto there. Terry's commentary was great. Terry and Megan. I also agreed with a lot of Hottie's uh, commentary, especially when she was talking about how the guys on the show were talking about themselves very negatively. She was just like, why are they so mean to themselves? I was saying the same thing. Like, can you guys see the good parts of yourself, please? And... <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking about you're horrible at this. I don't like this about myself. Like self-awareness is one thing, but all of the dudes were like, this about me sucks. <laughs> I know Megan was just like, that's just how Korean men are. But I was like, that's not good. What is it? The opposite of positive affirmations? Those are negative, <laughs> negative voices? Like what? And last thing I want to mention is this show is actually great to see because it shows you a lot of the cultural differences between Korean men and non-Korean women. There was a scene where Erica, I think she went on a date with Chan. She was asking him if any of the guys had any favorites in the house and he said no. She thought that that meant that he had no interest at all in her. I was just like watching them interact and I know the commentators were also watching them interact like no girl that's not what that means at all. There's definitely going to be some cultural differences when it comes to communication. There's also going to be some difficulties when it comes to being able to have conversations in English and thoroughly communicate like I know a couple of contestants have varying levels of English. One part of me is really happy that they mixed it up but I also think it's a tremendous disadvantage. A lot of women start to like people and feel the desire to establish intimacy with people who are able to mentally stimulate their minds. It brings some variety to the show, but as far as being romantically interesting, it makes the guys a little bit, it makes them cute, but we're not trying to see the guys as cute. <laughs> You're trying to see them as desirable. At the end of the day, I guess that would depend on the person because I know when I go overseas, not just to South Korea, if the person doesn't speak fluently English, my attraction to them doesn't expand very much because it's cute at first, but then it's just like, I can't talk to you more in depth. And then somebody with some riz comes in, like speaks fluent English and comes to me and they're like, hey girl. <laughs> I do wonder when it comes to the contestants who can't speak English as fluently, how they're going to woo the ladies. I do wonder about that. Like, what are they gonna do to woo them? You gotta boil the water, man. You gotta boil the water with words. Good thing it's ramen and chill and not ramen and forever because I, I couldn't see it working. Thank you for listening to my observations about the very first episode of Ramen and Chill. I don't know if I'm gonna add all these videos up together. I think I'm gonna put them all in a compilation. So see you guys in episode two. I can't wait to watch it. I can watch it now because I finally filmed this.